Hi everyone, today's video lists five things you can do to increase your deposit if you don't have enough to buy a house. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe below. The ad revenue that we will get from this channel is 100% donated to local New Zealand charities. So just watching this video, you've helped a great local cause. <music> Okay, today we're looking at five tips I can give you to help boost your deposit. The first thing is to look around your house and see what you can sell. It might be a spare car that you don't use anymore, just sitting there on the driveway slowly or quickly depreciating in value. It might be the camping gear that you went away once with your partner and almost had a divorce over. It could be the mountain bike that you bought and took out to ride just that once. There's a ton of stuff sitting around your house right now that isn't being used and could be sold to increase your deposit. Grab a camera, take photos and list them on Trade Me. That money is just sitting there, not being used. If you're borrowing at 90%, $5,000 worth of old stuff you don't use means another $50,000 of borrowing that is possible. My second tip is to find and organize those spare savings accounts. Now, it's incredibly easy to sign up for bank accounts, share trading accounts like sharesies or savings accounts. They're really easy to sign up online these days, which means they're really easy to forget about. Maybe you tried sharesies two years ago and never did anything with the money in there. Scoop all those random savings up into one savings account so that it's really easy to prove to the bank how much you have as a deposit. All right, tip three, try and convince your employer to pay out accrued holiday pay. Hopefully you've got some vacation days stacked up at your job with no intention of taking them. This is effectively savings that isn't producing any return. Now, one of the concerns that employers have about doing this is that it could be a health and safety issue. If you've been working 80 hours a week for the past three years and you haven't had a holiday, that is a health and safety risk. But if your employer is happy to do it, they could pay you out some of that accrued holiday pay and you will have a boost to your deposit. So chat to your employer about it. Understand that there are some limitations to what an employer can do, but if you can free up some of that holiday pay, it'll help your deposit. There's just a little note that I need to make here too. If you're qualifying for the first home loan because you're under the income threshold, be careful that that extra pay doesn't pop you above the threshold. Remember the first home loan income threshold is calculated on your previous 12 months earnings. So a payout of your holiday pay could affect this. The same goes if you're receiving some government benefit like working for families. If nothing much will change for you if you're earning slightly more, consider asking your employer for this as an option. The key point to make to your employer might be that the holiday pay is sitting there as a liability on their company. In other words, a debt that they will someday have to pay. Paying it out means the liability is reduced or gone. This strategy will work particularly well for employers who don't want that liability of holiday pay sitting there, but are too short staffed to send employees away on forced leave. The fourth thing to look at is the bank of mum and dad, but not in the way we might expect. Even though your parents may not be able to gift you some money, they may have some equity in their house that you can co-borrow on. Now, at least one of the banks has a great product where you and your parents can borrow a part of the equity in their house. So you're responsible to pay it back as much as they are. And then it will free up that money to use as a deposit for you to buy a house. As a lot of you know, if you borrow over 80% on a house, the interest rate is often significantly higher. So using your parents' house as equity can really bring down your interest rate. And you'll see those special rates that you've been seeing in the media. In real numbers, the difference in interest payments between a $700,000 mortgage that is at 80% LVR and getting special rates or a $700,000 mortgage that is at 90% LVR could be between $5,250 and $8,000 per year in additional interest. Remember, we are talking exactly the same mortgage here, only that 10% of your mortgage is secured against your parents' home, which means the risk is less for the bank and you receive those special rates. My fifth and final tip is to start a side hustle. Now, anyone who has watched a few of our videos will know that a new business takes time to prove its profits and doesn't help your income. 
you need two years of profitable financial statements to be able to use a business as part of your income. But we're not looking at increasing our income at this point. We want to increase our deposit. If it's a profitable side hustle, you can increase the savings and therefore your deposit almost immediately. A really classic example of this is Uber. If you have an economic car that doesn't cost much to run, you can become an Uber driver very quickly. The money that you make from this, although it doesn't improve your immediate provable income, does increase your deposit and that's your savings towards your house. It doesn't have to be Uber, it can be anything that makes a profit. Just make sure it's making a profit before you invest too much into it. And finally, make sure you keep some tax aside for that side hustle because you have to pay tax on any income you make. So that's five tips you can use to increase your deposit for your first home or even your next investment property. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe below. Check out our video next week.